this video I'm going to demonstrate what I've done to mount the fish finder on my kayak. Uh, the kayak is a Viking pacer and the first step that I'm going to do to mount the fish finder is to mount the transducer for the fish finder. This particular fish finder has a transducer shaped like this, it's called a skimmer transducer and um, basically the steps that I'm going to follow are the ones essentially listed on the uh, Hobie Kayak Fish Finder install video. Um, I've had to be a bit creative with some things because um, it's not as easy to find a uh, Hobie Fish Finder installation kit in New Zealand. So one of the first things they show is to use a high density foam block that they provide you in their kit and what you're going to do is glue that block uh, and onto the onto the bottom of the hole on the inside of the hole of the fish of the um, kayak and essentially once that's uh, set in place you are going to um, fill the cavity in, in your high density foam block with some Sally's all clear uh, silicone and then just uh, push your your fish finder transducer into it so to make a a heavy a high density silicone uh, pad all I've done is basically take one of these um, children's play pad kind of the, the ones with the letters in I think this one was a Y and um, just uh, try, cut out a couple of squares trace out the basic shape cut it out with a craft knife and then just um, glue these two together with Silly's all clear as well these particular kayaks have a um, nice flat area between the two front scupper holes and I've chosen that to, to place the, uh, the high density foam pads. Uh, those are now siliconed into place and what I'm going to do next is put a um, nice flat piece of plastic or wood or something like that on top of that and uh, then add some weight on top of that to make sure that it sits nice and flat so we've got a nice bit of plastic there to make sure that it's centered and let's grab a smallish dumbbell and put it on top of that so that should do a reasonably good job of holding it in place for a couple of hours while that sets now while that is sitting I think I might as well go ahead and start thinking about what to do in terms of the actual placement of the fish finder and also what to do with the um, cabling. So I would think that this area around there is about the best, best possible place on this particular kayak to put the fish finder. A lot of people put them on the sides here but on this particular one the sides are angled and they've got this uh, kind of boarding rope uh, also in the way so I don't think that's going to particularly work well. The your seat is, is back here, the front of your seat will re usually come to about here you've got this access hatch, probably could put it here and to some extent that might be better because it would actually um, it would actually uh, prevent the bracket for the fish finder from sticking above the the line of the kayak so when you put it on the, on the roof racks of your car or something you're less likely to catch the bracket but I think the downside to putting it here is it's going to get in contact with a lot more water than um, because your, your feet tend to be quite wet generally and uh, a lot of water going up and down these scupper holes so I'm, I'm thinking at the moment probably the best spot to put it is um, it's just up up there uh, it's close to this side here as possible obviously so it's easier easiest to access the buttons but also um, in the future I might want to put another fishing rod holder on that side in which case um, really moving it this way as much as possible is going to be best. Okay, I've got the uh, mount for the fish finder in place that uh, worked out fairly easily, no, no big deal, just marked the spots and then I used some uh, silicone and some self tapping stainless steel screws to mount that. Now, Let's see if I can get this on there. That's really a matter of affair. So the fish finder will clip into place like that. And then I'm going to use uh, one of these tightening up grommets to uh, 
run the cabling through. So if we look on that side, I've got a hole next to the fish finder, and the idea is that I'll I'll seal up this with silicone around the grommet. The, it's the hole is is quite a good size so that the grommet just threads through the hole as well, and then also I should be able to get my arm through and um, from the from the hatch and um, screw this onto the bottom. Now I picked this particular grommet because. Um, the plug for the fish finder will go through it, which is nice, so I'm not going to bother chopping any cables off or anything like that. Um, obviously just um, mount that into there with silicone and then once I've got the wires through and I've got the length right so that it does a neat curve and plugs into the back of the fish finder, then I'll also fill in this uh, grommet with silicone and tighten it up so the whole thing should be fairly seriously waterproof. Okay, so all the cables have now been run through. This cable will make a nice curve and just plug into the back of the fish finder like that. And the, the grommet has sealed up fairly well. That's that's not got any um, silicone in yet, but I thought that's uh, something I can do lastly, but should be well sealed around the bottom. I don't, don't see any issue with uh, any chance of water really getting into the kayak there. The high density foam backers that I've got in there are all nice and um, nice and, and dry now. It's been in there for a few hours and all the foam uh, is kind of dried. So the idea will be that the transducer will sit inside some of that. Um, I'm going to fill up that gap with uh, the Silly's All Clear stuff, and the transducer will sit just like that inside it and then uh, all the cables will just be cable tied out of the way. Uh, this it's actually worked quite well. I think this this will work really well to hold the transducer in place uh, while I leave that silicone overnight to set. So all that probably if probably going to work okay. Um, and then basically we'll uh, take it out on the water tomorrow morning and have a go and see see what it reads. Okay, and that's the uh, transducer now sitting inside a decent blob of the Sally's All Clear inside its high density foam housing. So that seems to have gone fairly well. For the well. battery for the fish finder, I've opted for a 12 volt 4.2 amp hour battery rather than the standard 7 amp hour battery that most guys use. 
The reason for this is that um, even with this battery I expect about uh, 15 to 20 hours of, uh, of running uh, of the GPS, uh, sorry, of the fish finder before this battery is drained and generally I don't really go out for more than about four hours at a time so this battery should be fine. What I've done with the, the fuse that came with the um, fish finder is I used some of these uh, chocolate block connectors and found that they were a fairly easy way to connect to the terminals of the battery then run the fuse in series from the positive to this terminal here which I'm going to connect the positive of the fish finder to and that one there I'm going to connect the negative of the fish finder to um, on those on the f end of the cables from the fish finder I've just soldered some nice flexible cable with um, a couple of bootlace ferrules so they'll connect into there that way around and um, and then the battery the whole the whole thing will go into a dry bag which I will attach to one of these um, one of the supports for the scupper holes on the inside uh, should be pretty straightforward okay drifting now just a little bit closer to the harbour bridge not too many people out here it's about nine o'clock Sunday morning high tides at about midday so pretty nice morning it doesn't get much better than this almost no uh, swell wharfs over there somewhere and uh, fish finder appears to be working quite well registering about uh, 15 meters or so this is all still just running on the uh, on whatever the, the, the auto settings for pretty much everything um, I do uh, every now and then as I'm paddling out I do see the old fish blobs or what I assume to be fish blobs and also one kind of big hazy patch which um, the manual suggests is bait fish but no real way of knowing but uh, definitely appears to be working well so paddle a bit further and see if we can catch some dinner